Welcome to our video edition of Learn with LBSI for the month of December 2020 on 1099 reporting in SAP Business One. We are going to cover 1099 table setup, 1099 boxes setup, business partner master data overview, AP invoice overview, 1099 opening balances, 1099 editing overview, 1099 reports, and document editing and preview. Let's get started. In the United States, certain vendors are subject to 1099 reporting, meaning that payment to them must be tracked and reported to the United States Internal Revenue Service, the IRS. SAP Business One automates the tracking of payments that are subject to 1099 reporting and automatically creates 1099 forms at tax time. First, let's review the 1099 table setup. We will navigate to Administration, Setup, Financials, and select 1099 table. In 1099 table setup, SAP specifies the required form types. In our case, we're going to double click 1099 miscellaneous. This opens the 1099 boxes. In the 1099 boxes setup window, we see 1099 box. These are predefined boxes that come in the 1099 form. Next column, we see box description and the minimum 1099 amount. One must specify the 1099 minimum values. Vendors who do not reach this amount will not be reported. In our example, we will be using box number seven, non-employee compensation. Any value above $600 will be reported on 1099. Now we will review the business partner master data. When importing any existing vendor master data or adding new business partners into SAP Business One, you should designate your 1099 vendors as such. This saves you from having to change business partner master data manually. For setting up new vendors, you should know that the process of tracking 1099 payments starts in the business partner master data window. We will navigate to main menu, click on business partners, and click on Business Partner Master Data. We'll bring up our vendor, Brandon Miles. Here we have his social security number. Under the Accounting tab, we see that we have the 1099 form miscellaneous and the box 07 non-employee compensation. When running reports and adding information to documents, this is where the information is coming from, related to form and the box number. Next, we will review the AP invoice. We'll navigate to Main Menu, Purchasing AP, AP Invoice. In the AP Invoice window, you can override the default form and box if needed. In our example, these are found in the Accounting tab of the document. On the right side of the screen is where you find the 1099 form field and box 1099. That allows you to specify which 1099 form will be used to track payments to this vendor and the category for payments. With these boxes set, the payments to this vendor are tracked so that the 1099 form can be created and sent to the RRS as required. Next, we're going to verify the 1099 opening balances. If you have started working with the system in the middle of the year, you have the option to enter 1099 opening balances for your vendors. We will navigate to Administration, System Initialization, Opening Balances, 1099 Opening Balance. In the 1099 opening balance selection criteria, you may select the specific vendor on the from and to fields or leave it blank. By clicking OK, you will select all vendors. If we were to update this information, tab on the posting date and enter the date you want the opening balance to be posted. Tab to the 1099 form and select which form from the drop down menu. Tab to 1099 box and choose the appropriate box from the drop down menu. On the amount, enter the opening balance for that vendor. Continue until you have completed the 1099 opening balances entries. Once finished, click Update to save the information. We will now review 1099 editing. Editing 1099 vendors that are assigned a 1099 form within Business Partner Master Data will have AP invoices and credit memos that accumulate 1099 amounts for year-end reporting to federal authorities. If a document is incorrectly posted with the wrong 1099 amount, form, or box, you can use the 1099 editing function to modify the data. We will navigate to Main Menu, Financials, 1099 Editing. In the selection criteria, select one of the following display options, Open Invoices and Credit Memos, or Invoices and Credit Memos not marked as submitted. 
specify a range of vendor codes to display only documents related to said vendors. You may also specify a vendor group to display only documents linked to the vendors assigned to these groups. In the Properties window, you have additional selection criteria based on business partner properties. You may also select 1099 form and 1099 boxes. Otherwise, click OK to continue. In the 1099 editing window, this window displays the 1099 editing results according to your defined selection criteria. The window provides vendor code, vendor name, invoice numbers and credit memos linked to the document, posting date, invoice amount, form, box, payment date, payment amount, and 1099 amount. As a note, the display 1099 vendors only display only vendors that are linked to the 1099 form and 1099 boxes. Here we have an invoice for Brendan Miles, invoice number 1173. The invoice amount of $622.44, 1099 box being other, which was erroneously selected while creating the invoice. In order to correct it, select the box and change it from, in this case, 03 to 07, non-employee compensation. Once that has taken effect, click Update to save the information and now we'll return to our selection criteria by clicking on the blue arrow. For our second example, we will review invoices and credit memos not marked as submitted. We now have all currently paid invoices to vendors that qualify for 1099 reporting. We're also able to open these invoices by golden arrow into it. Here we have 1167, 1168, 1170, 1174, and 1176. In the last invoice for Brandon Miles, invoice 1176, we can see that line one is winter marketing campaign consulting and line two, office expenses, ribbons, and letters. For the purposes of 1099 reporting, we will only report line one, the $875. Therefore, by selecting the particular row, we are going to change the $962.65 to $875. By clicking update, we have made the change and only the $875 will be reported for this invoice. By clicking on the blue arrow, we will go back to our selection criteria. Now that we have edited the 1099 form, we are ready to open the 1099-1096 report. This report enables you to retrieve the information required for both 1099 and 1096 reports and print them on the pre-printed official forms. To open the window, we will navigate to Financials, Financial Reports, Accounting, and 1099-1096 report. Alternatively, you may also open the report from the Reports module. By navigating to Reports, clicking on Financials, Accounting, 1099-1096 report. In the Selection Criteria Report Type, you're able to select 1099 Vendor Summary Report, which will specify that the 1099 report should be summarized by vendors. 1099 Summary by Form Box Report specifies that the 1099 report should be summarized by 1099 forms or 1099 groups. If you select 1099 Form, this generates the 1099 report for one 1099 form only. The report results are summarized by vendors. The print layout for this report is designed for printing an official 1099 form. If you select 1096 form, this generates the 1096 form. This is an annual report that summarizes all the payments by box type. The print layout is designed for printing on an official 1096 form. Show not submitted report includes only documents that are not yet marked as submitted. Show submitted reports include documents that are marked as submitted. By clicking the 1099 forms ellipses, this is where you can select specific 1099 forms to be included in the report. By selecting 1099 boxes ellipses, you can select a specific 1099 boxes to be included in the report. If you check mark include payments which are not based on invoices, the report includes payments created for vendors not based on invoices. If you select include vendors with 1099 amount lower than required, 
The report includes vendors with 1099 amounts lower than the minimum amount defined for the box assigned to them. You may select a specific vendor by entering on the from and the to business partner code. You're also able to use the vendor group. This will include only vendors linked to the groups specified here. You may also choose all to include vendors of all groups. A further selection criteria of properties where you can select business partners' properties as selection criteria for the report. And posting date from and to is where you will specify the posting date range to be included in the report. By default, the range representing the calendar year of the current system date appears. If you're satisfied with the selection, click OK. In the 1099 form printing window, we're able to see the columns vendor name, vendor tax ID, 1099 form, 1099 box, total payments, and reported 1099 payments. By double-clicking on the row of the vendor's name, you'll be able to see the 1099 detail report per vendor. We are able to see the opening balance, and we're also able to see the correction that we made in terms of the 1099 payments. Instead of the 962.65, we're only reporting 875. The same can be done for Jessica. By double-clicking on the row, we see her opening balance along with invoice payments. In order to review the print layout, navigate to the icon Preview. Here you'll be able to see the 1099 form. The 1099 form will print two per page. At the top, we have Brandon Miles. At the bottom, we have Jessica Williams. As a reminder, this is the 1099 form to be printed on the official 1099 form. In the case that the printout is misaligned with the form, select the 1099 form printing window and navigate to Layout Designer. Select the bolded form and click on Manage Layout. Click Edit. You'll be able to move the fields around in order to fit the form properly. In our case, just click and hold the form area and you'll be able to move set area up, down, left or right. Once you have selected and confirmed that to be printed is printing correctly, click the X at the right top. It will ask you if you want to save the changes. Say yes. It is recommended to save as a new name in order to correct it again if needed and you still have the original file. Once you have successfully added a document name, click OK and we'll exit and say OK and click OK and reopen the form. In some instances, as that is not the default form, you may have to navigate to File, Print Layouts, and select your corrected form. Here we have the corrected change, where the OEC computer's company name was spaced further apart from the address field. As we have done the 1099 form, we'll do the same thing for the 1096 form. As we click on the blue arrow to go back to the selection criteria, and we'll change from 1099 form to 1096 form. We'll click OK. Here we have the 1096 form. We will also click on Print Preview and we'll be able to see the 1096 form. This is the printout that will be done on the 1096 official form. To print, click on the Print button or File Print. This concludes the presentation on how to create the 1099 reporting form in SAP Business One, bringing us to the tip of the day. Tip of the day less price shortcut. Select the unit price of either the sales order or purchase order and hold control tab over it to see the last price report for the item and customer. Year-end closing is a big event that affects many aspects of how SAP Business One operates. Easily reporting on vendors that require 1099 reporting is one of many tools that SAP has to offer. Join us as we help you learn more about SAP Business One has to offer by clicking the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notifications bell so you never miss a new video. As an SAP Gold Partner, LBSI can help you take full advantage of everything the system has to offer. To get in contact with us, visit our website at www.lbsi.com and navigate to the contact link. You can also email us at sales at lbsi.com for sales related inquiries or SAP support at lbsi.com if you're an existing client in need of support assistance.